Kia ora Ko Helen Davidson, aho. And I'm a General Manager at Engineering New Zealand. Today I'm joined by Rosalind Archer, a Deputy President, and Bridget Sissons, who's another General Manager at Engineering New Zealand. And I'm pleased to introduce Richard Templer, who's our new CE and will be speaking shortly. Thank you for joining us, whether you're in front of your own screen or attending one of our branch watch parties. Today we have Bay of Plenty, East Coast, Manawatu, South Canterbury and Whanganui branches live streaming. So thank you to these branch and young engineer groups and committees for organising these events and a thank you to all our volunteers who have committed to work tirelessly to connect with our members. I'd like to acknowledge and thank our other board members who are also dialing in today. So we have our Vice President, Tim Fisher, and board members Brian Leyland, Jeff Farquhar, Jan Evans-Freeman, and Matt Harris. And we also have Kenny Shoy with our Manawatu branch members in Palmerston North. So remember you can submit questions in real time online via Pigeonhole. Just click the link on the screen or scan the QR code. You can ask questions anonymously and we'll answer as many as we can in the time that we have. You can also vote for the questions that you think are important by logging into Pigeonhole. But for now, I'll hand over to Rosalind. So by, by way of introduction, I'm a Professor and Deputy Dean at Te Heringa Mātai Pukaha, the Faculty of Engineering at the University of Auckland. I joined the board in 2019 and became Deputy President earlier this year. Being on the board means I have the opportunity to connect with our technical group, branch and young engineers chairs to strengthen the relationship with Te Aurangahau, Engineering New Zealand. And I've enjoyed getting to know various branches along the way, including NZIGE and and I look forward to continuing this relationship in the coming year. So a big part of today is to introduce you to our new Chief Executive, Richard Templer. Richard joined us on November 16th, so he's still pretty fresh into his role. But when we chose Richard, he really stood out to us as a collegial leader, someone who gets things done through and with others, someone who's good at leading a team and building relationships. That's really critical right now. So we'll talk more about strategy soon. But in that context, it's important to say we weren't looking for a CE to overturn things and start from scratch. We're really clear about the direction we're heading in and we look forward to seeing where Richard takes us from here. So before I say much more, I want to give Richard a chance to speak, to introduce himself and to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Rosalind. Ko rongia toku maunga, ko waipa toku wawa, e tupuaki aki nahina puri, e raro itimaro o tainui. Ko Richard Templer taka ingawa, ko Leanne toka, toku wahini, ko Logan toku tama, e kuraina a, au i whari wānanga tamaki makaro. E hiranuku mai matuu ki whanganui atara, kei kandala aho i noho ana, kei te ao rangaho Engineering New Zealand aho i mahi ana. Kia ora and welcome, I'm Richard Templer. Uh, I grew up in a little place called Nahanapuri, which is beside the Prongia Mountain and next to the uh, Waipa River. Uh, I grew up on a dairy farm there, and uh, that's Tainui country, for those who, who know it. Uh, I'm married to my wife, uh, my wife Leanne and I have been married for some time. We have one son, uh, Logan, who's about to turn 21, 
and I studied at Auckland University. I'm a mechanical engineer by profession, having both a bachelor's and a PhD in mechanical engineering. I've been lucky to work in a wide variety of places, uh, do international work in uh, Australia, Europe and, uh, and the US, as well as uh, visiting for work South, South America, and most recently worked for the Manawatu District Council where I was the chief executive there. So hello to the Manawatu branch. Uh, what drew me to this role was my passion for engineering. From when I've been a small child, I've been fascinating, fascinated about how and why things work and was always interested in trying to take things apart and occasionally get them back together again. And uh, yeah, this I guess I was passionate about engineering before I knew what engineering was. For me, another thing that... In, it made this role really exciting was the position the engineering profession finds itself in. Uh, I think there's a huge opportunity in the next five to ten years for the engineering profession. We're going to see unprecedented levels of infrastructure investment. We're going to see a lot of investment in productive industries, particularly because of the availability of cheap capital. And this is an opportunity for engineers to deliver solutions that not only deliver economic returns, but also deliver cultural, social and environmental returns so that we can build solutions which are better for all of society rather than just returning on dollars. So our strategic vision to build a better New Zealand, to engineer a better New Zealand, really resonates for me. It's how do we address the issues of the wealth and poverty gap of climate change, of environmental degre degradation through great engineering solutions. In my first few weeks in the role, what has really stood out to me has been the enthusiasm both for people inside the organisation and outside have for engineering and the engineering profession. And also the positive reaction to the CPENG uh, review. It's been uh, really well supported and we've had lots of feedback, which is fantastic. I look forward to the opportunity to meet you, uh, including in person, uh, COVID-19 perm permitting. And I am really looking forward to getting out and about next year to visit the branches. One of the questions that came up in our first Member Connect is what are my plans for the first six months? So for me, it's all about embedding our refresh strategy, the CPENG uh, review, contacting with as many stakeholders as possible, raising the profile of Engineering New Zealand, supporting our engagement with iwi, growing our sector programs, helping advance the diversity agenda and also seeing our wonder projects grow. So thank you very much and we're up to any questions. Are there any questions that I should handle at this moment? No, I don't think we've got any questions just at the moment, Richard. So Excellent. perhaps we can hand back to Rosalind. Okay, fingers crossed for my sound. I apologise that we seem to have had some glitches before. So I would like to speak to strategy. So over the past five years, we've created a, a strategy back in 2016 that focused on bringing engineering to life. And that was underpinned by generating greater connection, credibility, influence and recognition for engineers. And we knew the best measure of our strategy's success would be member growth and engagement. So during these five years, our membership numbers have increased from 15,000 to 22,000. And while we've had growth in every age range, our proportion of members under 40 has increased from 45% in 2017 to 57% in 2018, excluding students. And that's hugely encouraging for everybody in the team. The initial strategy spanned five years. So in 2020, it came up for review. And after reflecting on all the feedback we've had in those past five years and considering the very real impact of COVID-19, 
we updated our strategy to reflect what our members and stakeholders need now and into the future. So it's an evolution rather than a radical direction. We still believe strongly in our mission and our vision to bring engineering to life for our members, you, so that you can engineer better lives for all New Zealanders. And this vision is still underpinned by generating greater influence, credibility, recognition and connection. But to these, we've added a fifth ambition, and that's that our members thrive in terms of both their career and their well-being. Even before COVID-19 reached New Zealand, we'd heard that engineers needed more support and they couldn't find that elsewhere with their mental health, career decisions and overall well-being. So hence the addition of our fifth ambition. So those five ambitions clearly articulate Engineering New Zealand's long-term purpose, where we ultimately want to get to in the next five years, and we're making good progress towards them already. So if you have any questions on strategy, feel free to put them in via pigeonhole, and you are welcome to ask questions anonymously. Thank you so much. Rosalind, we don't have any questions that have come through so far on the strategy, so we'll, we'll move forward, but just a reminder, pop them into pigeonhole uh, if and when you, a question arises for you, and um, we'll get back to them and, and circle back to Rosalind if we need to. Okay, sorry, one has just popped through for you, Rosalind, so you're not off, you're not off the hook. Um, question coming through is, has COVID changed our strategy? Well, inevitably, COVID has to be a factor. It is, it's a factor in the strategy of, of all organisations. But the underpinning five ambitions uh, do remain um, and are not uh, something that we walk away from just because of the challenges that COVID has thrown us. Naturally, COVID changes the way we deliver. We've taken things online. We've um, had to be very mindful of um, financial implications, but the underlying strategy does remain. Thank you, Rosalind. Another question um, around how are you acting? How are we acting on the Thrive Pillar? Who are we focusing on? Who are we focusing on? I, Thrive applies to, to all our members, whether they are their students, whether they're mid-career or whether they're later on in the career. So it does apply to everyone. Uh, for me, it also um, dovetails nicely with our um, work in diversity and inclusion to make sure all engineers thrive. Great, thank you, Rosalind. And there are um, there are some bits and pieces we're going to talk about later on in terms of some of the work we we have been doing to help our members thrive. So if we need to um, to circle back on that, um, we we can then too. Okay, so now we've covered off the uh, the big picture. I'm going to talk a bit about what we've been doing to bring the strategy to life, especially in this extraordinary of years that we have had. So responding to COVID-19 and the disruption and stress it has caused engineers has been a huge focus for Engineering New Zealand this year. On a big picture level, we've regularly brought together our sector CEs and engineering employers. And these virtual catch-ups have shown us the power of our collective to share intelligence agree positions and to align our efforts. That's led us to advocate to ministers and officials about the wage subsidy, shovel-ready projects and how important certainty is to the market, among other things. When Jacinda Ardern announced her cabinet earlier this month, she noticed that as well as Grant Robertson holding the finance portfolio, that infrastructure had been coupled into his portfolios as well. And she said this was so that he can focus on the overall agenda in that space because it's enormous. She said we will be very focused on making sure projects are rolling out the door as we expect and in a timely way. 
Many in our profession were really pleased to see this high level of commitment and quietly optimistic about real progress being made. Progress in getting the free water stimulus package approved and money into the system is another positive signal for our members. We'll continue to push the message around workflow certainty, simplifying procurement processes and confidence. We've also reflected on the fact that while people remain concerned about work through 2021, most firms have ended 2020 in a position significantly better than they had anticipated back in March when we went into lockdown and when we first started to have our fortnightly sessions. Yes, the future is uncertain, but it's encouraging to see that so many predictions earlier this year were too negative. And it's worth bearing that in mind as we continue through this uncertain period. None of us can predict the future, and sometimes it's not as bad as we think. At an individual member level, Engineering New Zealand has been focused on providing as much support as we can, and this feeds into the question around um, helping our members thrive. So whether, whether that's webinars around managing stress and uncertainty, or financial health, or material on our website for people to work through in their own time. We've teamed up with MAS or MAS to provide our members access to a wellbeing portal that is full of additional resources for our members. And we're really keen to do more in this space to help support you. We've all had to adapt and change this year and understand that change can be difficult. One of the positives from this year is the use of technology. We kept connected and reached more members by increasing our well webinar offerings, and this will continue, like we have in today's session. During the first lockdown, we started a program of phoning members to check in, something that we had really positive feedback about, in which we also found a really valuable source of connection and information about how people were doing. Through the Engineering New Zealand Foundation, We've delivered a career transition pilot for our Auckland, Canterbury and Southland members who have been or who are in the process of being made redundant. Feedback from participants was extremely positive and we're working with the foundation to determine our next steps. We can also offer financial support for individuals regarding their membership fees where that is appropriate. We're keen to hear any ideas around what else you think or need is helpful to support our members to thrive. Kia ora, Helen. Um, so we've got quite a few questions uh, here after that. Um, the first one is, what's our strategy for monitoring and improving member numbers and chartered registrations per industry to get better and more diverse engagement across the engineering spectrum? Thanks, Bridget. I wonder if that's a good one to talk to in respect of, of the work that we're doing around the membership pathway in Goal 1. Yeah, we could. Yeah. Um, so actually, we're doing a lot of stuff to recruit new members and to then um, help nurture and develop them through the membership pathway. Um, the first one, obviously, many of you will know, and we're going to talk about it a bit later, is Hononga. So we've got our new member system. And we're really hoping that that will be, um, and the feedback that we've had is that it's a very intuitive uh, easy to use system and over time we're going to be able to send much more targeted, tailored, relevant information to each and every member that will that we hope will encourage um, much uh, and be more relevant to a much broader range of engineers. We're also doing a huge amount of work with the diversity agenda to um, help our, and support our engineering firms to uh, really support and nurture their female uh, engineers into positions of leadership along with encourage um, and support more ethnic diversity, particularly Māori and Pacifica engineers. So that's some of the things that we're doing in that space. Uh, and there's a question for Helen. <laughs> it is, uh, what's our strategy for um, enhancing the perception and reputation of our engineers, particularly noting that CTV is still in the news and unresolved? 
Thanks, Bridget. That's a, a really important and critical question. And um, as you will have heard from when Rosalind was talking, you know, the credibility is one of our key ambitions within our strategy. And there's a lot of work we're doing around that in terms of raising the bar for, for engineers. And that goes to the heart of, of how we can increase public trust and confidence in the profession. So there is a lot of work happening in that space because it can happen in many different ways. We're going to talk a little bit about um, our work in sector programs and engineering practice in a minute, and that's a key part of our response to those issues. Um, we're also working on a report covering wider systems issues based on information that we've gathered, gathered through our complaints processes over the last uh, few years. And of course, our CPENG review is another piece of critical piece of our overall work to raise the bar. Got it, huh? Um, so this is one for Richard. Many thanks for your introduction, Richard. I see a need for technical leadership in New Zealand, especially navigating climate change and RMA reform. Does our strategy respond directly to either of these? I think very much our strategy does, because if you're thinking about our aim of you know, engineers uh, growing and, and developing and helping contribute to a better New Zealand, in order to contribute to a better New Zealand, New Zealand has to address the issue of climate change. Um, we're all familiar with the fact that uh, the New Zealand government is going to declare a climate change emergency. That suggests they're going to put a real focus on addressing the key issues around climate change. And I think engineer, the engineering profession in Engineering New Zealand has an important role into contributing. But I think the key thing that the contribution has to be a positive one. It has to be how do we help find solutions to these problems? What are the ways we can help the economy move to a zero carbon base? rather than just pointing out that there are a lot of challenges ahead. I think it's about finding solutions rather than identifying the challenges, because I think the challenges are well known. And I think the same applies uh, to the challenges around RMA. Um, coming from a local government background, I'm familiar with the RMA proposed reforms. I think I would observe that this is something that's been identified both across the sector and across the uh, community as an area needing attention. And I, it's my belief that we will have an opportunity to input into this. And as the advocate on behalf of the profession, engineering, will be, engineering New Zealand will be making a submission into the process. Kia ora, Richard. We have um, another question here about Honunga. How would you rate the rollout of the new IT system, or is it too early to judge? Um, I don't think it's too early, although obviously uh, the longer it's in, the better it's going to get. Um, but we've had a lot of very, very positive feedback so far, and we've had over 30% of our members activate their, their new accounts. And um, our numbers show that of those people that have activated, um, most of them on average are using it uh, three or four times um, already. And our new join process has seen uh, over a thousand new members join the organisation, which we think is hugely positive. So we're very hopeful that um, it is much more intuitive and friendly and easier to use, and it's going to get better and better over time. Fantastic. Yeah. That's all our questions for the moment. That's all our questions for the moment. Um, if you have put other questions through, don't worry, we are holding them uh, for the end. So so we will we will get through to them. But for now, I just want to talk a little bit about our CPENG review. You've probably heard me refer to that a couple of times already. And um, if you don't know what that is, well, let me tell you. So in early November, we launched our review of CPENT, the Chartered Professional Engineers Scheme. And our review aims to raise the bar and increase public and regulator confidence in that quality mark. So hopefully you've already come along to one of our dedicated webinars, which are also available online for you to watch. But I'll give a really quick summary. What we know is that public and regulator confidence in the Chartered Professional Engineers registration is low because it doesn't provide enough assurance that engineers are working within their competence, especially in the safety critical work. There's been a lot of talk about change over the last 10 years. 
but rather than wait any longer for government-led change, we want to improve what's under our control now. We've heard really clearly from our technical groups that reform is urgent and that we must respond to that. So we've reviewed CPENG and we're now seeking your feedback on our proposals for change. And at a really high level, the proposals for change include four key things. So that's raising the standard of CPENG by making changes to the assessment and the reassessment process. It includes introducing classes of CPENG that set clear competence requirements for specific disciplines and that have their own post-nominal, for example, CPENG structural or CPENG fire. This would set a really clear and high bar to be developed in conjunction with technical groups. Thirdly, we're proposing some changes to the complaints and appeals process that will make them more efficient and proportionate. And lastly, at the same time, we want to make the general CPENG a respected quality mark that uh, engineers, professional engineers of all disciplines can strive for. I'd really encourage you to engage with the discussion document and then have your say via our online survey or by emailing us. And you can find all the information about that in the discussion document and the webinars on our website. Our next steps will depend on your feedback. Lastly, consultation on those proposals will close on the 20th of January next year. Kia ora, Helen. A couple of questions about um, the CP interview. The first one is there's some confusion between C chartered membership and CP inch. Some state that they're equivalent. Is this being addressed? By the way, I haven't read the CP inch <laughs> consultation document yet. Okay, look, that's a, that's a really good question and we do face into that in the discussion document. You know, our vision is to have an unambiguous quality mark for the profession and what we have been hearing is that there is confusion between the Chartered Member of Engineering New Zealand and the Chartered Professional Engineers um, marks and post nominals. So the, while the discussion document itself is about improving CPENG, we're really cognizant that, that this is an issue that we need to face into to meet our um, overall vision and we really want to hear your feedback on that. So do check out the document and tell us what you think. And uh, lastly, when is it envisaged that the assessment process and registration categories for CPENG will change? Thanks Bridget. So um, what we're looking at now is to get feedback on proposals. And so after we get that feedback back on the 20th of January, it'll be a process for us to go through and see what, what you've all said about those proposals and that will help inform where we go to next. So some of the proposals will be operational and they're things we can do quite quickly. Some will require a change to the rules or the Act, which require us to work with MB through different types of um, regulatory or legislative processes. So it's a bit hard to say when change will happen, but what we will do after we have assessed that feedback, we will be sharing that back to members. We'll tell you what we've heard, what we're proposing to do and what the timeframes might look like. We also are um, really um, conscious that any transition to a, a strength in CPENG is fair. So we'll be looking really clearly at how we make that transition fair and easy for current CPENGers. Kia ora. Thanks, Helen. Um, uh, I'm going to talk now about uh, two of the areas of work that we'd really like to highlight for you. Um, the first one is our sector programs. So um, we've been, our uh, Engineering New Zealand sector programs team has been delivering projects that help bring engineering to life in partnership with other organisations. Mostly at the moment that's with uh, government regulators like MB and Whakakotahi, uh, New Zealand Transport Agency. And the projects all line up with our Engineering New Zealand strategic objectives, as well as delivering value to the funding partner and also, of course, to the overall profession. They support um, engineers' credibility, influence, recognition and connections. And um, they include things like improving the regulatory and operational systems or um, producing technical guidance material that engineers can refer to in their daily work. Um, our interest in the issues that underpin these projects goes beyond the delivery of commissioned services. It's much more about contributing to a really high-performing system that enables engineers to engineer better lives for all of us. 
To do this, we collaborate with expert engineers and technical groups, and we get their guidance and expertise to develop and deliver specific projects. This technical expertise and input are really critical to the project's success. And to recognise how important um, that input is, we pay all of the engineers contracted to the project for their services, and we also ensure that all costs are covered for Engineering New Zealand to do the work. Um, our active projects for MB at the moment include the C5 Evidence Project, which we've gathered evidence on the impacts of the regulated Red Book versus the Yellow Chapter C5 section. The Geotech Practice Series, which we're finally fi currently finalising uh, draft modules which underpin geotechnical engineering work. And the Low Damage Seismic Design work, um, which is about designing buildings beyond the code. We're doing all of these through highly collaborative cross-sector processes. And we're also working with Waka Kutahi to design possible solutions for the future state for certification of our heavy vehicle engineers. These are all long-standing, really tricky issues, and we appreciate the chance to work with the profession to help address them. We're also talking to um, a few other regulators and technical groups about, the, about whether this type of program could be of use in their areas. Um, and we're happy to answer any high-level questions just at the moment, but if you've got really specific questions, we'll be sharing Eleanor Laban's email address uh, after the presentation. You can email her directly. Thanks, Bridget. Uh, no um, specific questions for sector programs yet. I do understand there are lots of ones for the end, so um, let's move on to the next section. Great. Thanks, Helen. So the next section is all about our engineering practice team, which will be of real interest to, to those of you who um, want us to do more in the technical space. Uh, we, in the engineering practice team, works with industry, local and central government to help resolve current issues and spot future trends and how these will affect the industry. And I'm going to give a quick overview of some of the projects that we've got underway. This year, we've produced templates and documents for small engineering firms because we know that the, they, the very cost they face of producing these documents on their own is sometimes prohibitive. Currently, these show good practice in the structural space, but over time we'll be delivering more for other disciplines as well. They can be accessed from the same area on the website, oh, they're actually in the member area of our new membership portal, um, as the producer statements. And a couple of these specific um, templates that are worthy of highlighting. The durability guidance document was released this year in conjunction with ACE New Zealand and engineers from other organisations including HERA and Steel Construction New Zealand, SCNZ. The updated B2 letters are accepted throughout New Zealand and we also have work underway on a practice note on steel durability in conjunction with brands and again CCNZ. The producer statement series is currently being updated to make it much easier to use and more adaptable for different disciplines as well as being more secure for engineers. There have been cases of fraudulent use and we're working to reduce or stop this where we can. We're creating an online version that will auto-populate fields to reduce the time engineers spend filling out forms as well as the traditional editable PDFs. And in December, we'll launch a Lessons to be Learned initiative in partnership with all our technical groups, looking at past engineering activities and experiences to improve future actions and behaviours. And we're updating the construction monitoring guidelines as well as making them more applicable for different disciplines. So there's a huge amount of work going on in that technical space. Thanks, Bridget. We have one question come through, which I'll attempt to give an answer to. And um, the question is, have the templates produced been peer-reviewed? So the templates have been produced with our members, for our members, um, drawing on um, expertise from within our technical groups and other relevant stakeholders as well. Uh, if you do have any specific feedback about them, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Okay, so we've got a question uh, now. We'll, we'll look at um, moving on to a couple of general questions uh, before we hand over to, uh, to Rosalind for a wrap up. So the first question is, there's been glitches with the new IT system and many people being left off the bulk invoices sent to companies. What has been done to rectify this going into 2021? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, I think that with any new system, there are going to be a few minor glitches. 
Um, we, in the past, have it's been a very manual process to get all uh, the people who are being paid for by their companies onto their company uh, lists. And we're working with employer organisations to find ways to make that a much smoother and easier, easier process. Um, we're building some specific technology to help us with that, and that will be introduced before the next billing round. So um, fingers crossed, 2021 will be a much smoother and easier process. Apologies for any inconvenience on that. Thanks, Bridget. Richard, maybe a question for you. Will the cost of membership decrease as we have an increase in members? Uh, the short answer is no, because at the moment, uh, due to the impact of COVID-19, we're running a deficit budget. Thank you. Another question is, will there be a review of branches budgeting and allowances to empower alignment with the new strategy? Um, perhaps I'll, I'll give that a start and then um, Richard or Bridget can jump in. But um, when we were developing the, the budget for this year, um, we've had to grapple with both uncertainty around member fee income and reduced income in other areas like courses and events. So um, this means reducing our expenditure for 2021 across all areas to match our projected revenue. It's too soon to say where we might end up in, um, later on this year um, with a significant portion of our member fees still to collect, though it is on track so far. What we do want to say is if your branch or group has a proposed event or activity that can't be met within your budget, please do come and talk with us. Okay, another question. I am a CPENG practice area assessor. Um, looking for um, engagement um, and input into the um, proposed changes. So um, absolutely we want to hear um, your, your input on the proposed changes and particularly with your insights as a, a CPENG practice area assessor. So it's really important that we get all the range of views and that's what the current consultation is about. So I do encourage you to, to get engaged um, with the document Tell us what you think through the different forums and you know, feel free to give us a call as well to ring Peter or Brett or myself. We're really happy to talk to you about the proposals. Um, I've got a question for Helen. Why do, what does Engineering New Zealand tell the ministers that, oh why doesn't, I'm assuming that means, why doesn't Engineering New Zealand tell the ministers that engineering contributes a few billion dollars to the economy when the economy and the whole of the modern world is entirely dependent on engineering? Thanks, Bridget. So uh, we did a piece of work um, this year with PwC on the value of engineering to the New Zealand economy, and that report says that uh, engineering contributes 15 billion to the New Zealand economy, and that's 5% uh, of uh, GP, GDP, and equivalent to the primary sector. And this has been really useful um, in our advocacy work to government. Okay, another question. There are a lot of young engineers looking for mentors. Can you outline how members and branches can assist in linking with these young engineers? Bridget. Yeah, hi. Thanks, Helen. Um, so we've got a program called Mentor Me. I'm sure many of you know about it. Um, this year's program is drawing to a close, but we'll be starting up um, a whole new program for 2021 in February or March, and we'll be looking for both mentors, so experienced engineers to volunteer to mentor younger engineers, and also uh, mentees, young engineers who want to mentor. So uh, look out for that. Uh, it's a formalised program for 10 months. Um, we try and match people in regions so they can have face-to-face -face meetings as well as virtual meetings, but where it's, possi where it's not possible, we, we set up virtual mentoring. Um, and we'll be putting out a whole bunch of information about that early in the new year. So here's another one. It's my perception that there is a, reluctant to a reluctance to recognise engineering geologists with chartered status. Doesn't the PNGO category belittle the importance of this discipline to engineering? That might be a question for you, Helen. That, that might be a question for me. Uh, so our, our, when I was talking about the CPENG review, I mentioned that our vision is to have an unambiguous quality mark for the profession. And so that's for the profession um, as a whole, recognising the important role that our professional engineers play, our engineering 
um, technicians, engineering technologists and engineering geologists. So absolutely, um, you know, through our review, we're really mindful of, of how we recognise all the different occupations that sit within engineering and provide a quality mark that everybody can strive for. Great. Thanks, Helen. There's a question here about CPD. Is there a strategy to improve CPD material to make it relevant to all engineering disciplines and experience levels? I think that's probably one I can I can take a stab at. Um, yes, the answer is we've got um, a work stream as part of our one of our priority areas this year to look at our CPD offering and to really make sure that it is tailored and relevant, um, not just for uh, younger engineers, which we're going to do a specific focus on, but also for um, all the various disciplines. And we're really keen to work with the profession to help and give us guidance on what exactly the profession needs in terms of um, professional development. So look out for opportunities to feed into that process. And we will be um, sharing uh, the outcomes of that early in the new year. Um, obviously, our aim as your professional home is to deliver a blend of development that's relevant to your um, areas of expertise, but also your specific career stage. So we're working on a kind of matrix approach to how we might do that. Thanks, Bridget. I'm going to throw this next question to you too. Uh, so the success of small regional branches often relies on a few individuals. How will Engineering New Zealand support branches to ensure the regions don't let get left behind the main centres and that technical excellence is widespread? Yeah, that's a really good question and we are hugely appreciative of all of the volunteers throughout New Zealand, but particularly in the regions because we know that uh, the big main centres get um, a lot more of the resources and, uh, and focus um, from a professional development perspective um, and sometimes the regions miss out on that. So I guess one of the things we're looking at is what's the mix of, of CPD and, um, and events in those regions and how can we do them both in person and virtually so that the, all of New Zealand is, has the same opportunities to get involved. Um, Kirsty, and, who looks after our branches, who I'm sure many of you know, and Natasha, who looks after all our young engineers, make a real point of getting out to all of the, all of the regions and we really try very hard to make sure that our support is as equitable and fair across the board as we can. But if you're feeling like there are specific um, issues that your region wants to deal with or you're not getting the attention that you need, then feel free to get in touch. Thanks, Bridget. I think we have time for one more question before we are going to have to wrap up, really mindful of time. Um, what are the biggest challenges, risks or opportunities facing Engineering New Zealand in 2021? Richard, your one minute answer. Uh, the biggest challenge is the fact that we're dealing with a very different world uh, than the one that began in, at the start of 2020. Um, the impact of COVID-19 both nationally and globally has been immense and so both the challenge and the opportunity is how we as a pro profession respond. How do we increase the resilience of our people? How do we increase the resilience of our businesses? How do we increase the resilience of our communities so that we're better able to deal with shocks like COVID-19, like uh, adverse weather events, like climate change, and whatever else the world might throw at us? Thank you, uh, Richard. So that is all the um, time that we have um, for questions. Um, if there's any others, um, and they are being captured as they've come through, we'll look at other ways we can get back to you on these. But for now, I'll hand over to Rosalind to wrap us up for the day. Great. Thank you very much, Helen. So as we wrap up, I'd like to reflect on a couple of recent highlights. So for me, the launch of the new digital platform, Hononga, which provides a much better experience and a foundation for the team to continue to deliver so much more into the future. So everyone is thrilled with the feedback that has come in, but mindful that it's just the first step in an ongoing development program. So we are looking for your input and your ideas on where we take the platform. Do make sure that you've activated your account. That's where all your personal information is stored, and it's the best avenue to connect with us. Also, would love to 
note that our magazine, EG, won Best Magazine in the Trade category at the annual Webstar Magazine Media Awards and was a finalist for the Supreme Award. So that speaks volumes. And that publication is dedicated to showcasing engineering in all of its truly amazing forms. So it's great to see such high quality work win that external validation. Huge thanks to all of you for your continued support, your continued passion for the incredible profession that we share. And as others have mentioned, a really special thanks to all the volunteers behind the scenes and in the branches that make things happen for us. We are proud to be your representatives and your champions bringing engineering to life in everything that we do. So if you want to join the board, nominations open on Thursday the 4th of December and close in late January. There will be two vacant board member roles as well as the usual senior office holder positions of vice president, deputy president and president. So check out the website for more details. And then for this session, you'll soon receive a feedback survey. So do take a few moments to provide your thoughts on the session. And there's also an avenue there to ask further questions. Our last session is being held next Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. So please encourage friends and colleagues to attend that if they have missed out so far. So thank you for being a part of the conversation today and for everything you've contributed this year. I know 2020 will be a year that none of us will forget in a hurry, not just for the disruption, the stress, the uncertainty, but also for those really magical moments where humanity has absolutely shone through both individually and collectively. So I think that's the part of 2020 to hold on to. So thanks for connecting and see you all later.